Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek with the favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Art of Passive Income podcast, I have Corey Geary. And if you're not familiar with Corey, he was a seven figure house flipper that became a millionaire in crypto. And now he helps other entrepreneurs do the same. But what's interesting about Corey is that he actually looks at things that cash flow in the crypto space. Corey Geary, welcome. Oh man, Mark, thank you so much. I appreciate uh, you inviting me on. It's a blessing and honor to be here today. So Corey, let's just rewind the tape. Yeah. And let, let's talk about how you became, first of all, I got real estate and then transitioned into crypto. Yeah, I, I think it's good to kind of like tell the story from the beginning. You know, I got into real estate about a decade ago and I tell people real estate actually saved my life because I was a drug addict. I was an alcoholic when I got into real estate. I was going nowhere fast. And all I was doing, I was chasing the dollar. And that's what got me into real estate. And it forced me to level up my life, my spiritual, mental, physical, by being in rooms like people around, like yourself in masterminds. And I was able to learn how to level up spiritually, mentally. And now I've been sober for multiple years. I have a family and I live in Puerto Rico. Like that would never have happened if it went for real estate and and changing my mindset, learning to love myself, changing my spirituality. And it was just an absolute blessing. Um, but through that journey, I built what I called a seven figure prison where in the end of 2000, well, actually the beginning of 2022, I had this beast of a business where I had like 17 employees, was making uh, multiple seven figures, but I was working, you know, 15, 16 hours a day. It was a multiple lawsuits. I even had a lawsuit going on with the attorney general. I mean, it was insane. And I was just, you know, I was absolutely miserable. Um, I had all this money. It was great. I was making all this money. Great business. But man, it was just not where I wanted to be at in life. And I went on a spiritual journey at the time I read the book, The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer, one of the most powerful books I've ever read in my life, changed my entrepreneurial journey to teach me to stop clawing my way to success and let God or the universe guide your way to success. Success. And at the time, I was already dabbling with cryptocurrency and I was having a little bit of success with it. I was like, man, I already knew it was one of the highest appreciating asset classes known to mankind. I already knew in 2020 and 21, it created more millionaires and billionaires than any other asset class, including real estate. And I thought to myself, what if I actually buckled down, got serious about this and treated it like an actual asset class versus like a casino. And that's what I did. I joined masterminds. I hired a private mentor. I started going to events. And uh, by the end of 2022, I was making so much money and passive income from cryptocurrency that it paled in comparison to my real estate business. And I shut my real estate company down, let all my team members go. I was even coaching real estate at the time. I stopped doing that. And that's when I did move to Puerto Rico. And now I've bought my time back. I do what I want with whom I want, however I want, which defines my my life as far as, far as success. That defines success in my life. And uh, it's been absolutely beautiful. Now we help other entrepreneurs do the same through our community and mastermind. And it's just been so much fun, man. And uh, yeah, that's kind of like the high level five minute <laughs> in a nutshell. So yeah, yeah. There's so much there to unpack. You know, it's interesting when I, you know, when when people tell me that, you know, they they were, um, you know, suffering with, with drug or uh, drugs or alcohol abuse and, you know, addicts. And I, I always think, well, we're all addicts in some way. And I always mm -hmm. think about that Gabor Mate quote, don't ask why the addiction, ask why the pain. And, you know, it's so interesting that people are able to, you know, go on that journey and, uh, and sort of, you know, put the light on it and shine it and then come out of it in, in a, in an incredible way. And then they become stronger, more resilient. And you find that those people tend to have the biggest hearts and want to help others uh, because they've suffered so deeply. And then as far as the untethered soul, it's one of my favorite books as well. And, Amazing. Uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, I meditate every day. Uh, it's, yep. it's one of those things where um, when you, when you see it, you can't unsee it. And and you become less attached to the thoughts. You become less attached to everything in a sense. It's not that you're unattached um, in a, in a cold way. You're just, you're not clinging and you're not suffering. Right. 
So you're not it, your thoughts, you're not your body, you're not your identity. Uh, once you realize some of these things, it it changes your perspective in life. No, no, for sure, for sure. But what's interesting to me is that you, you know, you built this basically a great job for the, yourself, right? It, it was a prison, and then you're like, okay, there's a better way to do this, and you went into crypto. Now, what was interesting to me is when I think of crypto. I think of gambling. And when I think of the stock market, most people do. I, I think of gambling. So tell me why you're you're calling it an asset class and it it's you know it's not gambling and you can create passive income. Can we talk a little bit about that? For sure. Um, and I believe anytime you treat any asset class like gambling, you're gonna lose. I'll, I'll give you a real quick snippet like that's how i used to treat real estate in the very beginning and in fact on my third deal i lost two hundred fifty thousand dollars. it wiped me out and that's why i started wholesaling and i started getting into novations and these other strategies in real estate um but i because i didn't have mentorship i wasn't taking it serious it was like i watched the tv show fix and flop i'm like oh i could do that these guys make 80 grand in 20 minutes i could do that now it, 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 reality <laughs> set in and because i was treating it like a casino i was just like throwing money at it and thought money would come back. Crypto is the same way. If you go in and you just start throwing money around at it because you're seeing all your friends kind of get wealthy with it, or you're seeing you know people on the five o'clock news buying Lamborghinis, whatever it may be, it's the hottest, newest, newest thing. That's why you're getting in while well, you're getting in at the top for one. And for two, you're treating it like a casino and you're gonna throw money around without doing proper due diligence without doing proper research, not without understanding how cryptocurrency, what it's used for, the actual use case, the utility, why it was created, why it's here. But these are all, all the questions and the, the, the stuff that you need to start digging about or, or, or start learning about if you wanna start treating it like an asset class and start understanding how this works under the hood. And once you start understanding the utility of cryptocurrency, you'll also see there's a lot of ways of making passive income and legitimate passive income. Um, I ask uh, real estate investors all the time, would you ever buy a rental property and not put a tenant in place? And they go, no, that's crazy. And then why do you treat your crypto like that? You go on a Coinbase or crypto.com and you buy Ethereum and you hope the number go up. You realize you could pull that Ethereum off of Coinbase, put it on the Ethereum blockchain and mine the blocks with that Ethereum. It doesn't require any work by you. It doesn't require any electricity like Bitcoin does. All it does, your computer works. Uh, your computer's doing all the work. It's a server and you earn more Ethereum. But people don't know that. They don't realize that. They, they just go on and treat it like a casino. Like you said, they go buy Ethereum, hope the number go up. And uh, usually they, they're doing that at the wrong time of the market cycle. You want to be coming into this asset class when people are fearful. It's the old Warren Buffett saying, buy when people are fearful, sell when they're greedy. It's never held more true than in crypto because crypto is so volatile. But right now is a great time to get involved. We just had the Bitcoin halving. We got, you know, the uh, presidential election coming up. We got a lot of other, you know, kind of like economy type uh, stuff that's really bullish. Uh, and uh, this is a great time to get involved. But if you wait to when your Uber driver is telling you, oh, I made $50,000 on this dog coin, that's too late. Don't get in then. That's when you should be selling. You need to wait another four years because it works in four-year cycles. So uh, market cycles will crush you, and they will also make you wealth beyond your, your, your wildest dreams. So uh, market cycles are key. Okay, so... Just to, to reiterate, number one, you have to do your due diligence. Yes. Number two, you have to understand that you can buy into, say, an, an asset class like, and I don't know if, if Ethereum is an asset class or it's a coin or it's a blockchain. There's all these terms that we can unpack. But yes. every, every, I think most people know about Bitcoin and Ethereum. There's lots of other coins that actually do have certain utilities. We can talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. So you want a coin that actually has some utility to it. And then you want to make sure that it can cash flow. But most importantly, you want to make sure that you're buying and you're you're completely aware of where you are in the cycle and know Correct. when you're going to get out so that you're not wrecking yourself. So let's let's talk about some of those things. So number one, 
when you're doing due diligence, what are you looking for? Okay. A few different things. You're looking for a protocol that has product market fit, that aims to solve a problem in the crypto space. And they have a community that backs it. You want to see a cult-like community, kind of like pre-early Apple days. Apple, you know, that was like th those guys who held that stock in the early days, were they were very cult-like. And you want to see that in a cryptocurrency project. We saw it in Bitcoin. We saw it in Ethereum in the early days. We want to see that in any new uh, protocol that's getting released. Two, you want to see what how the code is written. Now, you don't have to go and be the person that learns how to read code, but a good cryptocurrency project should have audits. And so you should get to go in there and read the audits. Audits are just a third party entity that's coming out and, and, and basically they're reading the code and they're telling you what, uh, what, what's inside. Is there any, any problems? Is it, is it t locked tight? Right. Is there admin keys? What do the admin keys allow the founders to do? Stuff like that. And you want to be able to go in there and read those audits and know how to read those audits. Uh, also, you want to make sure the founder has a track record. You don't want to just be investing in some guy who's coding in his mom's basement. You want to make sure this guy has either launched cryptocurrencies that have been very successful before. Maybe he's got business acumen in real life that he's done well. Uh, maybe he's been an entrepreneur and he's he's you know created multiple businesses and now he's in crypto and he's he's building stuff on the blockchain. So you obviously want to do research on the founder, just like you do. When you, when you invest in a real estate project, when I'm investing in a uh, a syndication, I want to know who the operator is. What is his track record? What has he been doing and how well has he done in his journey? I need to know that stuff if I'm going to give him my hard-earned money. This is no different. It is no different. And so those are some of the things that we look for when we're doing due diligence. And uh, we want to look to see how what's what's built under the hood. Is this, is this thing have good fundamentals? It has a good tokenomics this is a crypto word tokenomics just means it's built to pump and it's built for uh you know has product market fit basically and uh yeah a lot of this stuff man it creates passive income people don't realize it now to get real passive income in crypto you have to get into what's called defi decentralized finance this is where you're engaging on the blockchain engaging the code on the blockchain yourself and this takes a little bit of learning this is not something that, you know, it's not as easy as going to Coinbase and buying the newest dog coin. You have to understand how to do this and you have to put the reps in and the hours in to, to be able to navigate your way around in DeFi. Um, but this is what how this is real crypto and the way crypto was intended to be used. And I'll give you one more thing before uh, I know you're probably going to have some more questions. One, another, a great way of making passive income in crypto. What is Coinbase's business model? Well, all they do is offer up assets for the marketplace to come and trade in and out of, and they earn all the fees. In fact, Binance makes $24 billion a year with a B. It's insane. That's their business model, right? Well, in DeFi, since I don't buy my coins off of Coinbase or Binance, where do I buy my coins? Peer to peer. So say, for example, I own Ethereum and Hex. These are two cryptocurrencies. I could put them in a liquidity pool in DeFi, the marketplace will trade in and out of them. I earn all the fees. I'm the Coinbase. I'm the Binance. Real cryptocurrency gives power back to the people that once only big banks and centralized entities used to have. Okay, so now you're speaking my language because in the land business, though, the way we do it, we are we are the bank, and yes, that's that's essentially what our our model it's sexy. is. Yes, and yeah, and so. Let's, I mean, explain to me like I'm a, I'm a, a, a seven-year-old. Yeah. What is a coin and what is the blockchain? So let's start with the blockchain because that'd probably be easiest. So the blockchain, all it is, is a big online ledger. That's it. In fact, when you're mining, that's one form of passive income. What your computer does, it's, it's now a, puzzle piece to the blockchain is a piece of the blockchain because your computer executes the transactions on this ledger it validates the ledger what we call what we call holding consensus and then it also makes new blocks what's a block a block is just an, a, a 
uh, place where information is stored. It's this ledger. So I get all this information gets stored on the ledger. The block gets filled and it gets pushed down the line. Your computer or somebody's computer who's mining makes a new block. Then they fill the info and it, it keeps going like that forever. And that's why it's called a block chain. And you can look back in time all the way to what we call the Genesis block. We'll, 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 we'll use Ethereum as an example. Ethereum came out in 2000 and I think it was 13 or 14. You can look back at the Genesis block when Ethereum was created and all the information stored in that block all the way up to current present time. And that's what's so beautiful about blockchain. It's fully transparent. And, uh, and so that's what it is. It's just a big online ledger. So that's blockchain, right? Now on the blockchain, you have these different currencies that get filled into the ledger. And you could have I mean, something like Ethereum has, I think, almost a million different currencies that are created on it. And uh, what's great about Ethereum versus Bitcoin, Bitcoin only had one use case. It was to, to send and receive. That was it. Economic value. So I have this economic value, which is called Bitcoin, which is just a coin, which is a unit of, uh, of for the ledger. And I could send it and receive it. Well, when Ethereum came out, they came out with what was called smart contracts. Now, this makes your money programmable, which is really cool. So you can do like liquidity providing, which is where you become the coin base. You can do um, other type of utility. Like, for example, there's a, a protocol in the blockchain where there's leverage trading. I don't leverage trade, but anytime somebody takes a leverage out, they're, they have to pay a fee by the hour or where all the fees go. They go to the holder of the coin that is represented by the protocol. So it's like a like a, a crypto dividend, right? Because there's no CEO and there's no uh, management team that owns the protocol. It's just code. So you have all these different use cases or now programmable money uh, where it, it, it actually does something besides just send and receive. Another good example, Hex. Hex is a CD on the blockchain where you can lock your money up like a CD, like a traditional CD at the bank. And in the, all the bank is you're getting inflation uh, on your money while it's locked up. Well, you can do the exact same thing on the blockchain, but it's very controlled inflation and uh, you're earning a little, and you pick the date you want to lock it up and unlock it, but you're earning more and more as your money's locked. So there's another good example of a coin and its use case on the blockchain. Um, it, it's What it's doing is bringing in traditional finance and it's they're bringing that to the blockchain where everything is programmable and everything's transparent and everything is just code because do you trust humans or do you trust code? Well, I'll pick code every day of the week. Humans, you know, you know how humans are. We make mistakes. We become evil sometimes. Uh, there's a lot of different problems. But with blockchain, is code is law. And that's what's great about it. So we're slowly navigating that way. There has to be, you know, there's more and more innovations that are coming out inside of the blockchain technology that's going to allow full basic, I I, I believe, where the, the dollar is going away. It's going to, it will be 100% digitally. By the time my daughter's my age, there will no longer be the dollar that you hold in your wallet, what we call fiat. And so it's just a matter of the innovation coming into play and adoption come into play, which we're seeing every market cycle, we see the adoption double. So, I mean, this is, this is a big topic and we don't have that much time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot to unpack. It is a lot to unpack. So given the time that we have, I know for me personally, I've, I've played around with it and I've won and I've lost. So I have uh, a mine, I, I mine, Dogecoin and Litecoin, and every day I convert it to Bitcoin. Now I'm going to start converting it to Ethereum after talking to you. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I do that, and I bought into a DAO, and I lost just about everything. It was it was a basically a, a Ponzi scheme. And I got one question uh, for that part: When did you buy into that DAO? What year? I think it was 2021. The top. It's so if you, if you had done your research and due diligence on market cycles, you would not have been buying into that Dow at that particular time. You would have been selling had you been in prior bear market. That was the time yeah. to sell, not the time to get in. 
Yeah. And, and what, you know, we've talked before, uh, I love your philosophy of, you know, make money during the the cycle in crypto. And then when you get out, go into real estate. Real so estate. you've got we wealth creation and then wealth preservation. That's right. And, it, you know, it's, it's a fascinating topic. So for those who are skeptical, like of the smartest people I know love crypto and the smartest people I know hate crypto. And so it's it's really interesting. Um, what is the counter argument to the people that say it has no crypto has really no utility? I mean, the counter argument is that it's just monetary value stored on the blockchain if you want to use it at just the basic level, right? You can come in and buy Bitcoin and you can see there's a monetary value there that's been stored there that's gone up at actually 6.5 million X. Meaning if you put $1 into 2009 when Bitcoin first emerged and sold the last top, well, you would have had $6.5 million. Now I know you're not that you wouldn't have sold the top and, and there's a bunch of other stuff, but still, the, the, the data is there. The facts are there. It's up to you to go look at the data and go look at the facts. This is the highest appreciating asset class known to mankind. There's no other asset class that's created more millionaires and billionaires than cryptocurrency. Go do the data. Go do the research. Last market cycle in 2020 and 21, 88,000 millionaires and billionaires were born out of this asset class. I know some of them here in Puerto Rico. That's why I moved to Puerto Rico, twofold, uh, taxes, and then also I wanted to be around people who had bigger portfolios than me. But that's why they moved here, is because they got to save on the taxes. So it's it's absolutely insane how early we still are in this asset class and that people are still turning their nose to it because there's not enough proof in the pudding, if you will. But if you wait till there's enough proof in the pudding or enough, you know, uh, positive cinema or like uh like a surety like real, real estate it's so easy because real estate's been around for so long and we want to make sure there's you know uh surety and what we're investing in it's easy to do but by the time you do that with crypto a lot of times it's too late you know you've missed that massive run-up and there will be a time where the adoption will be pretty big like it, it will most of the world will be in this asset class but by the time that happens and also there'll be a lot of regulation then by the time that happens, cryptocurrency, the volatility will be gone. It will be more like the stock market. And so if you want those really outlandish gains, you got to take risk. You got to be early. And that's only the believers are the ones who do well. I mean, if you talk to some of those early Bitcoin OG guys, everyone said they were crazy. They were insane. Yeah. And now there's these billionaires out here, they've never owned real estate. They've never owned a business. All they did was hold uh, some Bitcoin for the last 10 years. And so you just got to point to the data and the facts. And uh, some people will come along for the ride and some won't. And that's fine. It's all depending on how your, I think, your risk muscle is. Everyone's got a bit of a different risk muscle and how they how they allocate risk. Um, but it eventually i believe that we there'll be full world adoption to this asset class it fixes a problem uh, in humanity it gives us self sovereignty it teaches us to be our own bank permissionless money listen to that word nothing in our life is permissionless when we go out to eat and use a, use a credit card we have to use a third party permission when we go to the bank and pull money out we need the bank's permission everything we we, we do in life requires permission True DeFi blockchain crypto is permissionless. My brother sent me $20,000 on a Sunday night at one in the morning from Arizona to Puerto Rico. I got the money in about 10 seconds to so I could create some miners for him. You can't do that in TradFi. And it was permissionless. It was beautiful, right? And these are some of the ethos beyond of like, okay, coming into this asset class and just making money. There's a lot more when you peel the layers back. Amazing. There, there's there's so much more to unpack here, Corey. But unfortunately, <laughs> we, we're out of time. But at, at this point in the podcast, I, I, and your, your mentorship has been great. Uh, I want to ask you for one more tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? Oh, man, it, it's 
work on self-development over anything else. The one thing I've learned is, you know, through spiritual and mental self-development, everything else got elevated. And through that, I have learned one thing that's very controversial is what is your why? And I got news for you. Your why is not your kids. Your why is not your family. Your why is because you want time freedom. None of that stuff should be your why. Until you get to a point in your life where your why is self-love and knowing that you believe the abundance God has put in front of you, you still have work to do. I still have work to do, but that should be your why. And it sounds selfish, but you can't learn to love another until you learn to love, love yourself. And it's the same with wealth and everything else in life. You know, and there's a lot of books I can point to where I've learned these things like The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. There's just a couple at the top of my head. The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. The stuff, oh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. These things have taught me how to have self-love, self-respect, and know I deserve abundance. And that is my why. I love it. I actually, uh, I have not read Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, Amazing. But, I, but I own the book. So I've just got to get to Amazing. it. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Fantastic. Well, Corey, thank you so much. My tip of the week is learn more about what Corey and his partner, Dane, are doing. DeFiCashflowSystems.com. DeFiCashflowSystems.com. They will educate you and they will make sure that you do not get wrecked like I did in the crypto market and uh, do that. I have make a, a, a link to passive it. income. We make a much passive income. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what we love. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Also, I just want to remind people that today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks and transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, and efficiently. And uh, I know what you're thinking, what about the tuition? It ain't going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed. You're going to make it back in uh, 180 days or less. It just shows you did the work. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training and schedule a call. The landgeek.com forward slash training. Also, I want to thank the listeners. Remind you, the only way I'm going to get Corey and Dane to come back is if you do three favors. Follow, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review. Support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you for free a signed copy of Dirt Rich. And if you don't want the book, just do it selfishly. So Corey and Dane, We'll come back and keep educating us. Corey, are we good? We're good, Matt. I appreciate it. It's been an honor to come on. And this has been a blessing. So thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Thanks, Corey. Uh, look forward to part two. Thanks, everybody. Let freedom ring. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.